Thomas Jones, Senior Director of Analytical Services for Safe Food Alliance. I've spent most of my career studying biological and chemical hazards in foods, so it's my privilege to lead these next two sections in the class, which will help you identify the biological and chemical hazards that are important to call out in your HACCP plan. Let's look at foodborne illness and some of the contributing factors that might lead to such conditions. Well, hazards. It's a little bit overwhelming at first. There are many possible sources that could impact the safety of that food. The ingredients that we might use in food processing. The people that are working not only to harvest the crop, but also to process it in the facility. Any pests that might gain access to the facility and to the product, such as rodents, insects, or others. And of course, the operation itself. Sometimes the equipments and processes that we use can actually contribute to contamination. We'll start our tale with a little bit of history, and it's a tale of ignorance. Many of you may have heard of the famous character Typhoid Mary. What many people don't realize is that Mary Mellon was an actual person. In the 19th century, she emigrated from Ireland and became a cook for wealthy families in the East Coast. Unbeknownst to her, she was actually an asymptomatic carrier of Salmonella typhi. And in the process of being a cook, through poor hand sanitation and the fact that she was shedding this bacterium, she actually made families ill. Several people, in fact, died. As public health officials became better at their science, they began to realize that there was a contributing risk factor to all of these cases of typhoid fever, and it was Mary. She refused to believe that she was the cause of this illness, as she herself was perfectly healthy. Repeatedly, she kept doing the same things over and over, making things like her famous ice cream with peaches in it that apparently was an excellent vector for introducing salmonella typhi into people's diets. And ultimately, she wound up uh, incarcerated for several periods of time during her life because she would refuse to keep, she would refuse to not uh, stop cooking. Um, eventually, uh, she did uh, pass away and they were able to confirm post-mortem that she was carrying this bacterium in her gallbladder. So through this tale of ignorance, we can see that even individuals um, un who seem perfectly healthy can pose a risk to the food product. And proper hand sanitation, proper handling of foods is one of the ways that we can break this cycle. Now we have a little bit of humor from the archives. Boy, did I go to a bad seafood place last night. The catch of the day was salmonella. Well, Fozzie Bear may have had a good laugh about salmonella, but as we could see from uh, Mary Mallon's case, salmonella is no laughing matter. It's a very, very serious illness. This slide shows some of the data that we have on foodborne disease in the United States, both in terms of the number of millions of illnesses that we have each year, the number of hospitalizations from those illnesses, and sadly, the number of deaths from these illnesses. We can see that viruses comprise the majority of the illnesses, 5.5 million, whereas bacteria come in second at about 3.6 million, parasites a very small number, Hospitalizations, again, the viruses have about 15,000, but the majority of our actual hospitalizations are bacterial illnesses, 36,000. And deaths also, uh, bacteria are the number one cause or leading cause of foodborne disease deaths, 860. So we can see that these are real people, real numbers, and that these illnesses can seriously impact people's lives and change them forever. The top foodborne illnesses that we face in the United States include norovirus, and norovirus is one that you may be familiar with from some of the incidents in which cruise ships have left port and come back with many of the passengers ill. It's a very infectious illness. Non-typhoidal salmonella, so this would be salmonella beyond the type that we talked about with Mary Mallon, or typhoid Mary, Clostridium perfringens, again a, a toxin-based illness, and Campylobacter. Some other organisms of concern include uh, bacterial diseases such as Listeria, E. coli, Staphylococcus aureus or Staph, Clostridium botulinum, the causative agent of botulism, and Clostridium perfringens. We also have other, case, other types of uh, organisms of concern that are non-bacterial such as Hepatitis A, Cyclospora, which is a parasite. In fact, there was a recent uh, illness outbreak related to fresh produce with Cyclospora. Trichinella or trichinosis. Uh, this is a type of parasitic worm. Giardia, which can be waterborne. 
as well as various exotic parasites and seafood parasites that we may encounter. In terms of uh, foodborne diseases, we have to think of this as an important public health burden in the United States. So this is something that impacts every aspect of the economy and the health of our nation. In one study, over 4,000 foodborne illness outbreaks were recorded from 1998 through 2008. And the estimate was that about one in six get a foodborne illness each year, or 48 million individuals every year in the United States leading to 128,000 hospitalizations and about 3,000 deaths per year. So this is a potentially serious issue. Some of the foods involved in outbreaks, this is from the same data. This is domestic data from 1998 through 2008. And we can see that in terms of illnesses, produce uh, was the largest sector here. 46% of the illnesses were related to produce. Um, interestingly enough, out of the produce, leafy greens were the most of any single category at 23%. We can also see, though, that other major sectors include meat and poultry, dairy and eggs, and fish. Some things to think about with this data. There are a large number of illnesses due to the high consumption rate. If we think about leafy greens and the fact that people are eating salads, they're eating greens on their sandwiches, for example, they're eating a large amount or a large volume of that food and so we will see large numbers of illnesses. Another thing we have to think about that since the days of Typhoid Mary, our better detection methods are fantastic at finding these levels of contamination and putting together the pieces of an investigation to show what food caused an illness. The FDA is also doing increased sampling due to the implementation of the Food Safety Modernization Act. They want to collect more data to know exactly where the risks are. There's a much greater supply chain complexity than we had in the days of Typhoid Mary. Food poisoning at that time was mostly a family affair because food processing was cooking the food in your own pot. And you probably grew that food in your own farm or your own garden. So if something went wrong, it may impact your friends and your close family, but that was it. We now have a global distribution chain, and so anything that goes wrong can impact people in many different nations. And uh, some uh, of these issues may be more common in food service or buffets. We have a very convenient society where we like to eat on the go. And so we often see food handling practices there that can contribute to some of these illnesses.